We are back again for another week of Sourcing Challenge Weekly. It is today, the 12th of January, 2021. Uh, I'm here again with my good friend, Dov. Dov, how have you been? I've been amazing. You know, it's, uh, it's the beginning of a year and there are so many things happening already. And yeah, feels good. Feels good. What about you? Uh, I'm being good as well. I always know everybody's like, oh, it's January, you know, things, sing, things slow down in December uh, and then people getting back into it. It's like January, December, everything is always busy as always. Um, what I have seen is that from a kind of recruitment point of view, I see a lot more companies looking for recruiters again. Uh, I'm hoping it's, it's a sign of we did lose a lot of people in the industry um, when, when most countries went into lockdown, a lot of companies had hiring freezes. Um, I see more and more companies specifically in Europe kind of opening up and are looking for people again, especially, uh, you know, recruiters and sourcers. Like, you know, that's, that's what I like to see. Um, yeah, so absolutely. yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see. Like I, I kind of have uh, emails set up that I can see it's like what's coming in every day and you get more and more every day where it's like, you know, last year, the end of last year was like one or two per week. And uh, now you have new roles coming up every day. So I like seeing that. And I definitely hope, we're going to see a recovery in, in, in our kind of little niche industry much quicker than, uh, than what we saw. Like I, I remember being through this in 2008, 2009, uh, and that took a long time before I kind of saw that those, those signals as well. Um, so this definitely I see that going much quicker and see much more, like many more companies kind of saying, okay, it's a new year. We had to hire last year, but we probably held off on that a little bit. And we do really do need to hire because, you know, guess what? The world goes on and like, the money is still there. It's not like the financial crisis where lots of people lost money. The money is there. It's just our reality is different, uh, but we still need to grow, whether that's people working from home or not. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that. And that's been a, been a kind of big thing to see for me. And I think that for those who are active on LinkedIn, uh, not necessarily for sourcing, but for following information and exchanging information, um, my personal tip would be if you see someone posting that they're looking for a job, don't be shy to like or comment so that that message would be visible to a wider network. This is very important. And I think, first of all, it doesn't cost anything and you can help <laughs> someone else as well. So, yeah. No, no, but I, I was glad to see as well when we kind of that first week of January when people are back again, you had a lot of people update their LinkedIn profiles now working for new companies. So that was really nice to see as well. Yeah. Um, I think we talked about it a little bit last last week as well. Like a lot of our friends kind of went from going from freelance to being permanent, and and you still see some of that. When obviously you know, I did the same thing, where it's like, well, you, you kind of know what you have in a permanent role, and as a freelancer, you're constantly chasing that kind of the next contract. And and we did see some of the people that we know well who've been freelancing for a long time uh, take a permanent role with you know with a company that they were already with. Um, so you kind of see some of that, but yeah, there, there's some, some interesting like new roles in companies where it's like, oh, I didn't know that company before and, and people we know have gone and, and, and joined them. Exactly. So yeah, you found some, uh, some topics for us to talk about this week. Um, yeah, let's jump straight into that. What did, uh, what did you want to talk to first? Let's dive in. So um, the very first thing that actually was published today comes from our dear friend Irina. Mm -hmm. uh, Irina Shemaeva, who is a real legend for everyone who is in sourcing. Um, I think if looking, if, if it was comparing like music worlds, she would be like, I don't know, maybe like Tina Turner level kind of legend, you know. Uh, Rolling Stones who's been, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, someone who's been doing that for many years and yeah. she definitely knows. Uh, she's very technical as well. Um, so... Uh, on the blog Boolean Strings. That you and I mean, on that, there. if oh, if you're okay. not already following Boolean Strings, then you know, go in, definitely put in, put Boolean Strings on, on one of the websites that you constantly like to check. Um, and I believe their Ning site is up as well. So they do have a, a kind of social community around Boolean Strings where, uh, I mean, when, when, when I talked to David on the Sourcing Challenge show as well, that was how kind of how he joined the company, just being... Uh, really active on I think they have weekly talks about you know about sourcing about boolean strings and about you know how, what to put um so boolean strings.ning.com I think is still up um, so I'll double boolean, check that boolean strings.com yeah so that's the website but they still oh, have the, they the still community. have a social network kind of thing uh where, where you can kind of yeah where it's just chatting around uh the different topics and about the 
but yeah, definitely the, the article is on on her website, Bullying Strings. Uh, check that out. That's always whenever there's something new coming from Irina, it's well researched uh, and it's it's definitely something you should kind of look at. Um, she she's not the kind of one going out and seeing like oh what are other people written about. She does a lot of original research um, and and puts that out there and shares that shares really openly with the community. Exactly. So um, the so the post itself is called free topics and nine tools, and uh, um, I'm not gonna go you know one by one, but I think it's it's good just to check it out. Anyway, we're gonna put it into our links. Um, and basically what for, for me was really cool, um, there's um, one of the tools that is mentioned is called what's my name dot app mm -hmm. and it produces a list of over 60 social profiles for a username. Uh, I tried it myself for different uh, usernames and nicknames that I'm using. Actually what I was surprised with, it doesn't take information about from Facebook or Twitter, I think. Somehow those are left out. However, it's still um, generates quite a lot of uh, other other websites that you might be even surprised that you still have accounts there and you're like, oh. <laughs> you're talking really? about MySpace or? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't remember that there was something, there was something so bizarre that I was like, oh, do I have account there? You know, <laughs> so it's like, it's nothing bad, but it's like you really, you know, now we, we create so many accounts in general and uh, even if we test it, uh, we for, you know, and we stopped using it, we forget to delete those accounts. So it just yeah. stays. I, like I still remember in the beginning when I was on the internet, it was like, you know, you, you were calculating, well, you're collecting how many email addresses you could have. It was like, oh, I get a free one here and I get a free one there. And I think I had 30 something email addresses at some point and I don't remember any of them. Um, you know, you just kind of like, I was one of the first people to get a Gmail uh, back in 2004. Oh, wow. um, was it still Google Mail then? Oh, well, it still it is. Like, it, it was invite only. Um, one of my colleagues had gotten an invite and then I got an invite. Like, you know, it was, it was I mean, same, I, I joined LinkedIn at the same time. So it's like, I got, I got Gmail and I got LinkedIn the, the same year. So same thing, yeah. it's like LinkedIn was less than a million people um, I, I was oh, wow. 341,000 person to sign up for LinkedIn in 2004. Um, it, it, I read about LinkedIn and Wired magazine, like the actual print magazine, not the website. Like I bought a Wired magazine and I think the train station and they were talking about this social network LinkedIn. I was like, oh, I should check that out. Um, you know, that's why I joined LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, that like, and I got a Gmail back then, but before that it was like, you know, how many hotmails and different names things could you get? Cause just like now, like you, you want to have a new email every time you sign up for something for free. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, but it's about remembering all of those. So it's like, I don't remember any of them. So yeah, I'm pretty sure if I, if I did kind of looked at that, but I also, like, I mean, I use it a lot for specifically if I can see somebody that I'm looking at. Um, have have a vanity URL in LinkedIn that they actually change their LinkedIn um, ending um, because most people are just going to be like, you know, their name and then some random characters afterwards. Uh, whereas like you can't go in and change that. And even developers do that. So they change it. A lot of them change it to what they would then normally use as their GitHub name as well. So I, if I can't find an email anywhere, I would normally just like, ah, oh, this is a vanity URL. I wonder where else they would have used that. And it's normally the same one that they would have used on Twitter or, you know, or on, on GitHub and things like that. So, and that's definitely what, what this is perfect for. It's like, you have something and you, I think Facebook is a bit less so uh, because you can change. I mean, I have Mark Lundgren 14. So I guess 13 other Mark Lundgrens before me joined Facebook. But you can change it. Like you can, you can oh, go and manually change it if you okay. want to. Yeah, I just, uh, I don't think most people do. They do in other yeah. sites. They don't necessarily, plus I'm like, well, if there's 13 Mark Lundgrens before me, then I can't get Mark Lundgren just without anything. So what's the point? True, true. <laughs> um, another yeah. thing was... Um, those who are running searches on Google, you know that maybe you even tested it with your friends who are living in different countries, but your results will be given based on your location. 
and based on your personal habits. And uh, Irina listed one of the uh, ways, uh, the website called startpage.com. The way start page works, I think, is that it just, no, it just hides your search in general. Mm -hmm. So it's like a tour, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let me check. You can use DuckDuckGo as well. DuckDuckGo uses the Google search results, but they don't track you. Okay. So, you yeah, know, similar thing. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's the same thing with all uh, kind of, I think Jan put that in the first uh, full stack Picuda book as well, where there was ways that you could, because uh, obviously he gets the search results in check uh, and Google used to have that you could put after google.com, you could slash, uh, you could put something in so you wouldn't be directed to your local site that you could get the overall kind of thing. But they, like they started taking that away and now a lot of it. So it's like, yeah, we kind of have to go away or use VPNs to get search results for specific countries. Um, and, and things like that. So yeah. what I saw that Vivina was doing a lot as well, which is I think most, um, when they look at tools, I think most don't look at the Russian tools. So uh, Yandex is Yandex is essentially Google for anything outside of the US. Yandex is the Russian version of Google. Um, and in a lot of sense, Yandex has much better search results. So I used, uh, well, I use Yandex Translate for a lot of things because it's a lot of the times it's quicker and it's more, um, it's better for like things like German, Danish, things like that. Um, but also the reverse image search on Yandex gives me much better results than the reverse image search on Google. Uh, Google has gone really bad with reverse image search over the last couple of years. Like you, you know, you, you right click something and say, look this up on Google. And it's like, yeah, this is a woman. And it's like, yeah, duh, I got that, but I wanna know where else is this profile picture used? Uh, whereas I do the same on Yandex and I like I get results for, for what I actually wanted. Um, plus they will recommend, it's like, oh, this is some profile pictures that are similar with a, you know, that the, the person looks similar to what the one that you had. Uh, in, instead of telling me, yeah, this is a woman. It's like, yeah, I, I got that piece. Whereas Google will show me people with a similar background. Yandex will actually show me people who look similar. So a lot of the times that gives me much better results because you might have a profile picture that's a couple of years older, but Yandex will pick that up. Whereas Google will just pick up people who taken pictures at the same place with the same background. Exactly. So yeah, so uh, for more, you can have a look on Boolean strings, uh, free topics and nine tools. So oh, that definitely. was the pick number one. And uh, check them out. Um, when you're on Boolean strings as well, uh, definitely have a look at everybody, uh, everything that Ivina has written, but also have a look at their, uh, their training and their certification. So uh, Irina and David, um, we talked about David before and he's been on the show Do uh, they do training, I think, pretty much every week on different topics. And they do have an academy where you can sign up for doing all of the training that they do during the year. Um, and what they do is they, st they have one of the few still remaining sourcing certifications where uh, it's not necessarily linked to whether you've taken their training. So they do have it separately, uh, but where it's, it's, they have different levels of sourcing certification. Um, so check them out definitely if, uh, you know, if you're, you're missing um, like if you're looking for a certification and kind of like see what it is that they're looking for and what they can offer. And they have some, some brilliant um, training as well. I think this article came because they're going to be doing a tools training uh, workshop, uh, which is definitely worth the, from what I remember, their training is normally like 99 or $150 for, uh, for training, which is, is definitely reasonable for the amount of information you get out of them. And again, as we said, it's very technical. So you prepare for that. And, and, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, this is as well, uh, what is really cool that when you get to see Irina speak at the conferences, you understand how technical she is. So um, it might necessarily be for everyone, but uh, if you really want to dig a bit deeper, that's the best place to go to for sure. Um, then, um, another thing is, um, another friend and actually this person was on, on your show a, a, a little while ago. Uh, and I remember it was really funny because when we were recording uh, my episode, you say, it's like, oh, so who are you interviewing next? And you're like, oh, Dean DaCosta. And I was like, oh, 
okay, <laughs> you're talking to me and then you're talking to Dean DeCosta. I was like, yeah, it's very interesting. So uh, um, actually, um, this was the, um, the post that was done on recruitingtools.com. And it comes from my, my website now. Uh, that comes from Snow, uh, no, no, Noel. Was, from uh, Noel nice. Coca. Yeah. And well, for those who don't know Dean, I don't know what planet you live on. <laughs> uh, Dean is someone who is, I think, you know, has a lot of experience just like Irina as well. And he's extremely technical. And if you don't know about his blog or you don't know about... Uh, about the vi YouTube videos that he does, you need to find it, right? So basically this is the link uh, to that basically to the YouTube video where he talks about his um, massive black hole of information. Um, I think this is the only way to explain it. Um, so he is sharing uh, the star.me page uh, that he's built and he doesn't have one page, he has three, four different pages with different, different I think, uh, yeah, he, he started number five recently. I, I think I saw on a post on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, Dean used to have a hard time because he was, he would do these webinars pretty much every month uh, with whatever new tools are there, what's the best tools is. And he always got the same question and it was no matter what, it's like, what's the best tool for this? Um, and he used to, Dean used to then like just basically copy paste the same answers, like, you know, like these are the best, you know, these are the top five tools that I use at the moment and the same. Um, and I, that went on for years. I remember joining way back when, when, when ERE was actually like, was like a Q and A was basically Reddit for, you know, for, for sourcing and for recruiting. And, um, and it was the same thing. You were kind of like, Dean was asking, was answering questions on what tools to use. So he, when he started to start me, he could just start saying like, this is my collection. It's like, here's the link. Like it's all categorized. These are the tools that are good for that. But it changes all the time, which is why like there's constantly new tools coming. Um, Dean will always be the first one to, to volunteer to test out these new tools, uh, which is like whenever I am in search of a tool, which is where I go. Um, I, I don't use a lot of new tools, but I know this like, if I want to know what tools is best for for X or Y and Z, uh, that's the place to go. Uh, and Dean is the, the one to ask for. Like, I remember asking him as well because he's known as the tool guy and it was never his intention. Um, he's, you know, he's been in, our, in the industry for a long time, but it was never his intention to kind of become the tool guy. Uh, he just, just kind of fell into that role. Um, and he's very good at it. And like, we'll always, we'll always, as we said last week as well, it's definitely a YouTube channel to follow, uh, but also whenever there is a webinar or, and um, things like that, which Dean does a lot of that, um, definitely worth following and, and just kind of seeing what he's working on, what tools he's working with now. And at the same time, when, when, you, when you discover these kind of uh, treasures, because it is a treasure, because think about how much time it took for Dean to put everything into one place. It, of course, it's not necessarily that you're going to be using any of that or most of that. But when you have a category, like information is categorized, you can just go and search for what you're working on. And tools are always changing, what you said as well, right? And um, one tool will replace another tool, but don't rely just purely on tools, but tools can make your life a little easier, but they should not be the main thing. Like the main thing is the mindset, the main thing is the strategy, and you're kind of steps that you follow and then you know you incorporate with with the tools and and talking about the tools actually another uh, another magic uh, uh pandora's box because I, I can call it in that way because once you start actually looking at how much information is there it might take a while uh you might not necessarily want to do that in the morning on your working day because by lunch you will be like oh my god where where am i uh, so, uh, techniset.com, uh, I, I just came across this, um, actually this week when I was, uh, looking for, for, for content to share, um, and you, you are aware of what it is. So maybe you can just give more, you know, kind of backstory to this. Yeah. I mean, Techniset is one of those that's been really active in the, the OSINT community for many years. Uh, she, as far as I remember, she was one of the, she, she's a, um, 
She's a really active member of the OSIP's Curious community as well. They do uh, now, the, I think it's a weekly podcast or you know, actual stream. Um, she was interviewed on there a couple of months ago. So I'll try to see if I connected a link to that episode, but she gives a bit of a backstory of um, how she got into open source intelligence. Uh, but similar to, I mean, we've seen that Jan has been on, uh, been interviewed on the, the OSINT Curious show as well, because we do have a lot of kind of, that what the OSINT community has figured out now is that a lot of them come from military intelligence, the police, uh, you know, that they're, they're kind of, they're doing research, looking for people, looking for, you know, they're doing pen testing and things like that. But what they realized and we really realized as well, there's a lot of overlap in what we do. So a lot of the same tools that, we can use, but where the OSINT community much more like, if they're researching a case, a lot of the times like they're working for the police or they're looking for something, they need to have like really good proof and um, they need to be much more curious about locking off themselves that they're not open to attacks where we can be a bit more relaxed in terms of like how exactly we found that specific email address where we don't always need to prove that. Um, but they have a and lot they have of the to same be a bit, tools. And they have to be much more accurate as well with the findings because when you're sourcing for candidates... Look, if I get really the wrong matter, email right, address and it's... I end up with the wrong person, yeah, it's not ideal, but, yeah. you know, nothing big is lost on that. But, yeah, if they get, you know, if they go down the wrong rabbit hole and they somebody that they're actually searching for is not who they're searching for, it can have very different complications. Yeah, and, and this is you know, looking at the list. So as well, it might seem overwhelming because there's a lot of, you know, a lot of information added there. However, maybe if I would need to compare to Dean's list, I see more clarity in this one because it doesn't seem as overwhelming. Um, and as well, the, 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 the titles of those links are very descriptive. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually it even has stuff like, um, what I really liked was coding and technical knowledge, for example, and it gives you like links to where you can in improve your knowledge. And actually I have to like hands down Code Academy is something that I've been uh, on for the last few days, trying to uh, understand my tech knowledge and improve it uh, uh, at this very moment. So, and it's at, at the list number, you know, the first on the list when it comes to, to those things. So, um, and, and yeah, and you have like social media searches and OSIN tools, and maybe for us, it's not relevant to have the cyber crime side of things. Um, however, still just even scanning the titles of those, uh, um, of those book, bookmarklets, uh, like just what is saved, uh, it would be really cool. Like even on the search engines, you have 4,500 Google dorks list mm -hmm. 2018. We already spoke. What is Google? What are Google dorks? Um, and you know that's the thing that just create a habit of building these things by yourself as well. I'm sure that everyone is having their own kind of cool tools. Uh, just try to bring in this kind of structure. And actually, in his video, Dean is also uh, talking how you can create your own Star.me page. And because this is the best place to, to, to be. And we already mentioned that, I think, in the last episode as well. Um, you can take everything that you're using and just kind of dissect and put it in the visual um, categories in front mm -hmm. of you. And every single time when you need something, you can go back and you can find it. And remember that star.me doesn't necessarily is just like this when you just add the website. You can add notes and all the uh, other things and even RSS feeds as well, uh, which can be really cool if you have certain websites that you want uh, to, to subscribe like and one. to follow, follow the uh, for, for updates. Um, so no, it's absolutely. Really cool uh, I think Shamila is another one that did a long list um, and did, uh, she put it on GitHub back then, uh, like the last year yes. or something like that. So, you know, yeah, it's definitely... We all kind of have our own tools of how to organize this, but I like Technoset's way of, of doing it. Um, I definitely, like, I look into Dean's whenever I do need a new tool because it can be very overwhelming kind of going through all of that. Um, but, yeah, he's the go-to kind of person. It's like, I'm, I'm looking for a specific tool for a specific, um, you know, thing, then that would be where I look. 
but that being said, I think we, we talked about that as well. Like most of the tools is tools are there to automate or make easier things that you already know how to do. So from a, if you really want to understand what you are doing, that's the training you kind of need to have. It's like find out how to do things manually and then find a tool that helps you with that. Uh, if you, I see too many people panic because their tool stops working and they don't know how to do things without the tool. Um, like if you build up the knowledge of how to do things, then it doesn't matter what tool you use. It's like, we all have our pet, pet tools that we love using. I have some really old ones that I'm still using and they break, but I know how to fix them again. It's like, I, you know, I have a website scraper that I updated my Chrome and all of my recipes were gone, but I don't no. really mind, but I don't mind because I knew like I made all of those recipes and a lot of them has to be updated anyway. Like, you know, I, I would make a recipe for something that I needed once. Every website has slightly different structure, um, but I know how to make recipes. So I just, I make a new one and it, yeah. So it's going to take me 10 minutes to do what I needed to do on that website rather than two minutes. But it's enjoyable for me because I'm like, oh, there's actually, I get to look at, you know, the, the database structure of that specific website. What does the XML look like? And I find out that they're sharing things that they didn't share before mm -hmm. by looking at the code. I'm like, oh, I can actually, I can get this piece of information with something that's not visible on the website, but they have it in my browser. It's just, it's just hidden. So having to rewrite some of those recipes once in a while, I don't mind. But you need to learn first how to actually write recipes for, web, for for scrapers. And if you're not used to that, if you're used to using a specific tool so this, that gives it to you automatically and you don't know how it, then, you know, you're lost if that tool breaks, which it's, it's, I, it's, it's the same I thing. remember tools being bought. Like, you know, we had a yeah. tool that we all like to use and all of a sudden they were like, oh, we, we're closing down because we got bought by another company. You're like, yep. but, but why? <laughs> or it's the same thing when... Uh, you might be using custom search engine that was built by someone else. But then when you're keen in the, you know, the search string that you're looking for, you cannot necessarily know how the results are prioritized, what is hidden and what is, you know. So it might, it might show you the, the information that you're looking for, but it might hide so many more profiles because when you're not the one who built it, you don't necessarily can, you cannot rely on that data 100%. And I remember that you were the one who actually introduced me to scraping and to, uh, to, to, to building those recipes. So uh, tell me which of the scrapers are you, are you using right now? Do you, do you have one or you have different ones? I have one and it's, it's, it's still, it's, I think it's just called scraper. Um, so it's, and if you go, so it, it, it's on the Google store because it's a plugin. But it hasn't been updated since 2017 or even further back. And it links directly to a GitHub repository. So like, you know, it's, it, and there's been no change in the GitHub repository, which is what I like because it's like, it's got no bells and whistles. Like there's no pagination, there's no nothing. It, it, it scrapes the details and then I physically have to hit every page and scrape that page and then either paste it into wherever I want to paste it to. I can click to put it into a Google sheet, but it, I, I rarely do because it like then doesn't take all the accents. Like if I'm, if I'm scraping Russian websites, then I do not want it to, because it starts doing ASCII and shows me all of those funny codes where I just want the raw data. So I, I enjoy doing that, which is like, and I enjoy writing the recipe. So I work off of different browser instances. So it's like, sometimes it's like, oh, I, I want to scrape this website. And I realize I'm, I'm on my, my, you know, I'm on Chrome with my work email. And I'm like, I don't have the recipes for this on this one. And I was like, do I switch over to do it on? And I was like, nah, like, it's not that hard. Let me, you know, let me rewrite the recipe. And while I'm at it, see, is there data that I actually want from this website that I normally don't look at? Like, have they updated the, the kind of structure? And like, I learned from Aaron Lintz, like he showed me what to go in, where to find the, the XML, you know, copy the structure and then, you know, showed me how to do that. And then what I do now is like, I take, you know, I take the website and it's like, okay, I, I, I copy out the, XM, the XML links, the whole link. 
and I put them into a, a, a notepad and then look at what's the structure. And it's like, where does it cut off? Like, you know, what string is like, what can I, how can I get as much, many data fields as possible without having to do different recipes? Some, some pages just, you can, it's like the way that they build up. Like I have to do, you know, I have to get all the details of people in one recipe and then like the links to their website from another one. It's like, it's annoying. So it's like, I like that kind of challenge. Um, but again, it's like, I, I, I used, I, early on I was using data miner uh, and they keep updating that, but it just got to a point where it's like, I tried to use it again and it was too, too complicated for me because they tried to make it so easy to use that they didn't allow somebody like me who wants to do my own recipes to do that. Like it was like, just click here and we we'll scrape everything for you. Which again, it's like, I don't like because I want to know, am I getting everything? Are you, yeah. are you showing me what, you know, what you want to show me? Plus they had a thing was like, it's free, but then if you want to scrape certain sites, you have to have a premium one. And I'm like, look, data is data. If I look at it in my browser, I can scrape it. I don't need to pay you to scrape it. I like, and which is, I didn't like. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm still using an old scraper version from, I think like hasn't been updated for because that's, that's four the years. very first uh, scraper I remember that you showed me. And, and I'll never forget the, the day when you, so, when you sent me the script. And I, back then I had no understanding of what that means and where that, what is what. And actually there's so much magic when you start understanding the structure of the URL and the structure of the code and, you know, how certain information is pulled. Um, I was recently looking, well, data, data miner for me is maybe uh, the one that I'm using to scrape like LinkedIn and Google and when I, when I do sourcing. But for example, when I needed to scrape some of the stuff for my music side of things for like blogs and, and, and competitor analysis and so on, uh, I, I, I realized that data miner is a bit tricky because it doesn't necessarily give all of the information that I need. Yeah. And then... Um, actually I was, I turned to sorcerers and I was advised to look into web scraper mm -hmm. and that's how it's exactly called. Um, and you install it into your, uh, Chrome extension, but then you, it runs in your source code. So basically you, uh, you need, and, and maybe this is really good because it automatically teaches you to get used to seeing, you know, looking at the source code, yeah, the different, different information in front of you. So you don't, you know, you have to go into the other side. Um, it might look daunting at the beginning, but once you start uh, finding the patterns and seeing things in a different way, uh, it can be incredible. Like I, I remember it took me uh, five minutes to scrape one website that was holding like music industries, uh, 8,000 contacts or something. I was like, okay, you know, yeah. and, and with data miner that, that there would be so much pagination. It would be so extremely difficult. And I was like, oh, wow. I, I never thought of, thought of that. So I remember, I mean, I, even like I, so I did it with things that are openly available, but it's just that the way, so um, the script that I use to look for people on Stack Overflow, like go into Stack Exchange and it's like, okay, I want, if, I want the top people for this tag in this location. And it gives you a list and you can download the whole thing as a CSV. But what you don't get in the CSV is that you don't get the link to their actual, like you get their, the short name. Username, but, like, but you don't actually yeah. get the link to their Stack Overflow page, but the search results has that. So I'm like, yes, I can download the CSV and open that up, mm. or I can just scrape that list. And then I can choose, it's like, yes, I want their name, but I also want the link. I do the same when I do, you know, f uh, the, the, the Fortune top companies or the, the Forbes top companies kind of things like, you know, the list is there, you know, but you have to download the list. And, it, and I was like, I don't want all of the information that you have in those lists. I just, I want my own. So I structure it by like, I'll just scrape the columns that make sense for me. Um, and then sometimes it's like, you know, the link is there. Like, why wouldn't I put a column with the link to that? company so if I want to look at it um so yeah things like that it's like which is why I like to know how to do that plus it's like 
also one of the things I think I learned from from uh, from either from Aaron or somebody I think maybe Glenn Gutmach on the, you're actually learning a little bit of some of the web addresses you get have all the junk afterwards like you get the actual link and then you get all this the tracking junk which like makes, for campaigns you mean for campaigns LinkedIn does it as well if you right click on something and you actually look at the URL it's like it's the longest ever because it's like they're basically for themselves. It's like, what did this person search for when they got to this job or this profile and things like that? But you don't need all of that because you just need the beginning of it. Um, like basically, I think most websites, like everything after the question mark is junk or is tracking things. Um, so I, I, I learned as part of my script, like what to write so that I could just get the output of things of everything either before or after a specific character. So that instead of having the, you know, using two pages on a, on a URL that I just get the URL piece that I need and everything else is discard discarded. Like it's not like I'm not scraping that piece. So yeah, that big, big difference. And uh, I remember that way back, you were part of the source social code uh, group. And did you get this kind of uh, interest or passion for understanding the code and everything after you did that no you know, or, or that, you already had it from before it was there before that and i think the problem so we did yeah what was that uh that was like there was a couple of things other than being at one, yeah other than being at 1 a.m my time because steven from higher tool was doing it in the afternoon so it was 5 p.m in san francisco but that meant it was 1 a.m for me um and i did that we were all trying to learn python and that was probably the like python is an easier language to learn, but it's not easy to learn. Um, and, and it's like, you kind of need, the idea was to learn Python and then from there move on to building things. And like speaking to Andrew Bradshaw, you don't, I mean, if you're in OSINT, Python is brilliant to learn because you can write a lot of your scripts yourself that you can then run things on, especially if you're, you're paranoid and everything you do is in Linux and things like that. Like you can write a lot of scripts in Python that can help you doing open source investigation things. But as a sourcer, I'm not going to write Python code that goes out and, you know, crawls the internet and finds different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and what and Andre was saying is like, you, you're probably better off learning JavaScript or well, Google script so that you can write your own scripts in Google or in Google sheets or, you know, do your own like he does. Um, but it's like, I wanted to learn some, like just to understand it a bit better, but I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to be a coder. I don't have the, I don't have the patience to look at code all the time. I, I wanted to understand, I understand enough to look at, you know, XML, which is not even, you know, that's nothing. This is to understand the structure of how is the data in my browser build up to know what is it that I want to take from my browser to scrape. Yeah. I, I remember I had like such an incredible experience with Andre. Uh, I was so impressed with, with, with his videos and how he, and, and in general, how he was just generous about building stuff for the community and quickly is still one of the coolest tools. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's just brilliant, you know? And I remember uh, when someone would ask a question and instead of just answering a question, he would just, oh, I've built it like an hour later. And everyone <laughs> in the community would be like, wait, what? <laughs> and, and I remember I was so impressed. And we, we, we met in, in Sosu in Amsterdam when he was uh, talking a year ago. And we already been exchanging messages. And I said, well, I really would love to learn how to go one day. But I, I understand, like, because I had very specific ideas of, I, was, I felt like I was hitting the wall. I knew the information that I want to receive and I couldn't find the way of getting it. Like for example, uh, because the way I was, when I'm doing research with, uh, on LinkedIn, uh, when I'm working on the new, in the new market, on the new role, I love copy pasting a lot of information. And I, I, I wanted to find somehow some kind of tool or anything that would actually, I dumped that information and it just identifies patterns and based on that, you know, feeds other information and so on. So basically, long story short, uh, we ended up having, I think, a very intense 90 minute uh, <laughs> session 
uh, where he was like doing code. And for those who haven't seen any of his videos, like he's fast in general when he's coding. And, um, and I had zero coding experience back then and I still have zero, but, and I was just watching, you know, the screen and we were, I think we failed to record a session I was trying to make notes and I was trying to really understand what the hell is going on. And I said, you know, Andre, I love this, but I feel I need to go back to basics. <laughs> so it's, but he, he is such an inspiration when it comes to giving back as, as simple as that. And, uh, and uh, for those who are not aware of him, uh, you can find him. He, he was sharing a lot of content on GitHub. And as well, now he has his patron page as well. So there's a couple of things. Can, One, obviously, I support. did an interview with him. Two, he has a YouTube channel. I just saw that he has a Twitch channel as well. So if you're not, if you're on Twitch, like actually like follow follow him there as well. Um, he's very open about what he does. It's like so when he codes on new tools, he'll do it while being live on Twitch. Uh, and upload that to YouTube or being live on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, and and yeah, if if you do want to have uh, quickly go to his Patreon and support him there. Um, there's also a tier on Patreon. Uh, I think it's fifty dollars a month, where he will spend an hour with you every month as well, going through specific things, which is definitely, I mean, that's way undervaluing his time. Yeah, uh, because he's already really giving a lot back. But spending an hour with if you're if you're one of those people that actually need that kind of technical support on making things work or making things on this like understanding things, he, he will definitely he the be worth you'll be worth the money of spending an hour every month with him working on whatever it is you need to work on, uh, either with, with one of his tools or you know, coming up with a new tool that you're gonna need, or just understanding the way of using the tools for what you needed to do. And come on, let's be realistic. If you would really need to spend an hour with a developer, that would cost you way more. That would be minimum double the price. That's but like you would have to explain to a developer what it is we do. And it's like, why we have, we have a special use case, which is why well, Andre, you don't have to explain that because he's a sourcer that is also a developer. So he understands, which is why most of the time he has a tool that he's worked on that he, oh yeah, because he's probably had the same thought as you. The difference is we're like, I would love to have a tool like that where he's like, I wonder if I can make one like that. So he's, he's worked on something before and then somebody tr has the same thought and it triggers and he's like, I have something in my GitHub that I either did or I can work on that could do what you want it to do, uh, which is it, that work with a developer that doesn't understand what we do, that would take you much longer because first they would need to understand why it is we asking for things that doesn't make any sense to them that we would ask for. Yeah, and I remember like he had, uh, uh, he shared on GitHub uh, quite a few really cool things. Like one of them was um, searching on GitHub, I think for repositories and then that with the ability to filter things out and then download something like that. Yeah, I, th I think some of it was like actually filter repositories that people have done something in instead of, because a lot of tools just show people who have lots of repositories, including if they just forked other people's with, like you can make it look like you're a brilliant developer with most of those tools without having written any code because you just fork other people's code. And then all of a sudden it looks like you have lots of repositories in your GitHub profile, but they're not actually your code. Um, so if you can filter out the ones that you've actually committed code to or that you've written something in, it's going to give you a much better picture of does this person know what they and in what language do they actually contribute to open source repositories. And a footnote for those who have no understanding of what you just said, <laughs> uh, forking on GitHub means that you can take anyone's code and you can apply your own versions like up, you can you can build on it. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you've written the code, you just improved it. So that's very different. So like, that's very different if you would be building it from scratch. It's the collaborative um, nature of Git uh, that you, you, you can take somebody's code, fork it, make your own version, and then ask that person's like, well, I've written something new. Maybe you want to Im incorporate that into your code um, or just say, well, well we, we're going off another path. Um, so yeah, that's the whole kind of piece of, of open source. It's like you can take the open source, make a different version of it. 
Um, and sometimes like I use it just because like, oh, this is a cool tool and I kind of want to keep that piece of it. Um, but also it's like, you can't, like if you screw up in that piece of code, you didn't screw up in somebody else's code. It's like, well, it's your copy of it. So if you screwed up, it's your copy that got screwed up, not everybody else's. So yeah, yeah that's a billion. And I remember that uh, Andre as well was, uh, I, I've learned it from Aaron first about scraping meetups mm -hmm. and Slack, but then Andre, uh, because then you remember meetup changed. Yeah, yeah, around. I mean, both and it Aaron and Andre has slightly different ways of going at the same problem. And he just Sometimes did the bookmarklet, yeah. bookmarklet, which makes it like, bim. <laughs> exactly, I mean, I, don't, the, I, haven't, the, I haven't done it in a while, so I don't know if it's still working, but, uh, but yeah, so he's definitely someone to, to follow and you can even reach out to him if you have any ideas because uh, that, he loves solving problems and, yeah. uh, and your problem that you have might end up <laughs> as part of the product for, or is already the, part of the product of the but options, yeah, you know, exactly. for, uh, for the tools that he's building. So definitely follow him on, uh, but also go in. There's a, there's a quickly Facebook group as well, where he shares when something new happens to it. But yeah, I would definitely say like, if you, if you have uh, anything from $5 upwards, go in and support him on Patreon. Uh, he does give a lot back to the community, so I'll give a li little bit back to him. Um, support him in his work, and you'll, you know, depending on the tier, uh, the ten dollar tier, you'll always have the latest version of Quickly and whatever new tools he just happens to build that week. Um, plus, you get, I mean, I get the latest videos when he's changing something, um, and you know, when when something breaks, he's pretty good. He's really good at saying like this broke because something changed. Um, I'm working on it, so you'll get the new version whenever I, you know, whenever that's fixed. Um, and does it collaboratively? It actually, like you know, goes online and goes on YouTube and on uh, on on Twitch, and I can like, oh, this is what I'm doing, and he's really good at explaining what he's doing while he's doing it, which is like the best way to learn because it's like you're looking at him coding and it looks extreme, but he's explaining you know, this is the variable, this is why I'm doing that. And like, oh, I worked on something before. And it's just like, it's, it's really nice. It's like, I, I enjoy watching him code, uh, even though that could be really tedious watching somebody code. But because I know he's one of us and like he's explaining what he's doing, but also he's making tools for things that make sense in our world. And you know, for me, one of the coolest things is like his setup, like in the mic and the way his voice sounds on camera. I remember when we were jumping on that lesson like the, that we were doing, I was like, oh my God, this is exactly the sound that I hear all the time. Like, because his voice sounds like he, he's a storyteller. You know? He's a gamer and, setup, but yeah, yeah, really, really good. And it's like, yeah, so he's got a really good setup for that. Yeah, so it's just like, it's super, super cool. Um, all right, and I have one more person that I would recommend following. Uh, I came, came across a guy called Roger Nichols uh, on Twitter. And uh, I think that Jan, our friend Jan, was one of the people who was sharing his content on Twitter. And uh, oh, you can find the, this person as twitter.com forward slash eightfold14. Uh, and he is sharing a lot of content which comes from awesome community as well. So we're gonna put the link into the description as well. And I think that another thing is just to, whenever you start doing the research and you start finding people, uh, especially on Twitter, remember that you can add them to the list and those lists can be private. Uh, they can be public, it's absolutely up to you. Um, and then you can, easy, you can easily filter out the information. Uh, so if there's certain specific niche that you're interested, like Olsen, for example, uh, we already mentioned quite a few people that you should be following. Of course, Lockenbergs um, are as well working in that niche. Uh, I'm not sure how they're using Twitter though, but they're sharing a lot of content anyway uh, in other places. But I see um, Kim is definitely on there. So uh, yeah, but but like the the Olsen Curious community, there's a lot of them. I, like I know that like they just uh, there's going to be a lot of good things coming out of them this year as well. Uh, I just listened to their latest podcast about some of the changes in the, the OSIN Curious setup uh, so, and the, kind of what they're working on in terms of the website and marketing and things like that. Uh, and as far as I understand, Eightful 14 is, is part of that community as well. Um, but yeah, definitely if, if you're like us, you, 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 you like new things coming out and you don't see enough coming out in the sourcing and recruitment community, have a look at the OSINT community because 
they do work with a lot of the same things as we do, uh, obviously from a slightly different angle. Uh, you know, whenever a plane gets shut down over somewhere, uh, that's what they're going to be talking about, which isn't necessarily always interesting for us. But the way that they find information and they share information and, you know, that that's what can be interesting. So, yeah, if you want to go down rabbit holes, definitely look into OSINT. And part of that as well, social engineering. I think um, Glenn Cathy, when I interviewed him, and I know is, is one of the big things he's been on as well. So that whole kind of social engineering piece of uh, OSINT community uh, is big for, is a thing that he looks in as well. It's about kind of convincing people to do things and using that kind of, you know, using information that you have to to get the outcome that you want to get to. So it's a lot of what we kind of do in recruitment without thinking about it. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of training and a lot of a lot of tools and more on a psychological side that you can look into with that as well. Yeah. So and you know, and I I uh, I, I can only thank you because uh, you are in a way challenging me and this is a perfect word because this is a sourcing challenge show uh that to start looking into what's happening because i think that in general before um i was following several blogs and i was listening to your to your podcast but i was not necessarily doing my own research as much because you know there's always other things that you're doing but now it's so cool to actually be discovering things and just to understand how easy it is. Like all the information is in, 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 front, of, in front of us. So uh, my uh, request to everyone who is listening is that if we missed out on anything, if you know any, if you discovered any person that we should follow or we should uh, announce or a website, community, anything that is sourcing related, and you think that more people should be aware of that, or there are any meetups, any events that you would like us to talk about, do get in touch and we will be talking about it. Exactly. And yeah, we'll definitely back, be back again next week uh, to talk about you know, more shenanigans in the sourcing industry, uh, what new news is gonna come out. Um, and yeah, if we, whatever, and whatever else we find. Um, So if you want to join us, uh, we'll be back in a week. Uh, But until then, uh, definitely, I think go and uh, and, uh, just like last week, um, find Dov on Instagram, um, either with his alter ego of anything to do with music um, or as the link that we shared last time, Source with Dove, uh, more on the kind of career coaching, um, that kind of, that kind of. Still has zero content there. (laughs) It's going to come. You know, it's it's going to come. It's like, you know, yeah. at least you haven't beat them deplatformed. De- de- so uh, all of those people who can't uh, follow Donald Trump anymore on Twitter, I mean, at least they have somewhere else to go. Um, I, I like, uh, you know, <laughs> that was supposed, like everyone is talking about this. I'm sorry. This was supposed to be done four years ago. It's way too, too yeah, overused. Yeah, exactly. but... but it's like, yeah, you, you, you won't be that controversial anyway that they're going to have to deplatform no. you. So no. Uh, no content is just for now. But yeah, as Dov said, if you have things that you, you would like us to, uh, to talk about that we haven't, uh, we haven't seen, if you see new things coming out, definitely let us know. Um, we have some ideas of what we want to do with the sourcing challenge um, as a site. Um, and as I said last time as well, all the old episodes of the Sourcing Challenge show um, and the episodes uh, of this is now on the Sourcing Challenge website. So all the, the notes from this week's episode of this uh, is going to be on sourcingchallenge.com slash weekly four, uh, because this is our fourth show. Um, so go. Uh, Amazing. It's like and, a, yeah. a, it feels like a celebration is like a month then. <laughs> for, for exactly. Three. It's been a month now. So That's crazy. Um, but also there's the, the 64 episodes of the Sourcing Challenge show. Um, there is an article that Aaron wrote, I think, two, three years ago. And we'll get more and more content on the website. Uh, we've, uh, we've had the website since we started, but we've never really used it for anything. So um, slowly getting there, getting everything up. Uh, but there's going to be more and more things coming there about things that we like to talk about and obviously the new shows as well. So yeah, looking forward to seeing you all next week. Till next week. Have fun.